I am an American soldier. I'm a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place this first. I will never accept defeat. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined. I am disciplined. Physically and mentally tough. Trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I'm an expert, and I'm a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the, the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. They're strong, and there's Army strong. See what it takes at GoArmy.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a rider's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your riding into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Hey folks, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dr. Richard Harden. We are on the same mission, which is Waking Up America. We just have different paths. So stay tuned for some information on how you can keep up with Richard and all his work. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate Formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Supplies are limited. One free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, this is Jesse. How y'all doing out there today? You know, I miss you when we're not talking. 
Now, I got some show prep tonight, and we're going to try seeing if I can bang it on the desk. I kind of got it. It kind of scattered a little bit, but hey, we do what we got to. What can I say? A broken hand. Come on. Get, cut me a little bit of slack, guys. All right, before I get too far into my show, I got to do something. And all you regulars know exactly what I'm about to say. I got to give a shout out because he is just that cool to my friend, Scott Harbat. He is, for those of you who don't already know, and I'm sure some of you have heard this, we're going to keep it as brief as I can. He is a retired NYPD sergeant, 9-11 first responder, battling stage four esophageal cancer. And I'd like to call, encourage all of you listeners to head on over to Twitter and look up at Scott Harvath. S-C-O-T-T-H-A-R-V-A-T-H. He's got the most amazing positive, positive mental attitude. He is an outstanding human being. And you know what? He's battling cancer. Yet he was worried about me with a broken hand. Come on. If that doesn't say a lot, I don't know what does. Scott... You rock, dude. You rock. All right. Moving right along. And I will admit, I'm moving a little slow, slower than usual, guys. Now, I'm going to warn you, if my mic suddenly mutes, it's because I'm having a little bit of a medical issue. My... Pain meds are wreaking a little bit of havoc with my stomach, and I don't want you to hear it. So if we have any issues, I'm going to mute my mic, so if I suddenly go dead, trust me, I'll be back in a second. Just cut me some slack tonight, can you? Because my pain meds are kicking my six. I'm working on getting them changed, so before anybody says, change to this, change to that, I already called the doc, it's in, it's in the works, okay? All right. So, I just don't want you to have to hear that audio. I got a lot of audio I do want to share with you, though. You know I do. You know it. You know it. You know it. Now, tonight, I am going to end the show with taps. Can any of you out there guess why? No, there's not another fallen service member. This is for the Delaware Department of Corrections officer who was killed in a riot yesterday. So we are going out on taps tonight. Hang on, I'm trying to type one-handed and talk and... It just gets a little challenging at moments. Sorry guys, just bear with me. Hopefully I'll be feeling better tomorrow after I go see the doc and get that permanent cast. That would be awful nice. Yeah, it would. Hey Jeff at Stoner Brewer, you out there? You out there tonight? You listening tonight? I could really use a fan tonight. So, what can I say?
Jeff's one of my fans on Twitter. What can I say? It's Stoner Brewing Company. And he is he brews his own beer. So who knows? Maybe I'll have to have to get him and Dave Brewer to do a Saturday slowdown just for fun on homebrew beer. Because that could be a lot of fun. That could be just a fun, relaxed, chill, chill, kickback episode. All right, there is a lot of news in the world. I don't have anywhere near all of what I wanted prepped, but we're just going to make it work with what we got. Don't I always? Of course I do. All right, we're going to start with the US and USS Antietam. It is likely headed to dry dock for repairs. Oh, yes. The US Antietam is a cruiser that ran aground in Tokyo Bay. And its num- number is CG54. However, when I last checked up on the situation, the Navy and Japanese authorities were still searching for signs of the 1,100 gallons of hydraulic oil that leaked after the ship grounded. And Antietam was moved pierside to the U.S. naval base in Yokosuka, Japan, by tugs following the grounding. Divers are now cataloging the damage to the ship. So they're still working on the dive, on the estimates. At least one of two propeller hubs was damaged in the grounding. Expensive mistake for the Navy, but it lo- it appears that, and of course, there's an investigation has been started, and it appears that the Antietam was at anchor in the bay when high winds and a strong tide pushed the ship aground before the crew could maneuver the ship to safety. Safety. No further details have been released to the best of my knowledge, but then I will admit I was a little out of the loop today. So. Now, military... You're just not helping me today. You're really not. That wasn't the only bad news story I found today. Oh, no. No, it wasn't. Guys, I like to report on your successes. I really do. Okay. Air Force General... Arthur Lichty, and I apologize if I mispronounce that. Never want to mispronounce a name, but I am only human. Air Force General Arthur Lichty was demoted. Now, he's already retired. But they demoted him anyway. And here's how this went down. You're like, what? Yeah. He retired as a four-star. The Air Force has stripped a retired four-star general of two ranks and docked him about $60,000 per year in pension payments after determining that he had coerced sex with a subordinate officer three times and told her he would deny it until the day he died. The rare, and this is a rare move. This mo- means that retired General Arthur Lichty, who led the Air Mobile Command up in two, until 2009, will be demoted to Major General and see his retirement pay dip from about 216000 per year to one hundred and fifty-six. 
His case is the latest in a string of general officers to be sacked or demoted in the last few years. Now, I am not one for forcing herself on people. Let's start that. Start there. Number two. It looks like the reporting system, that the new reporting system for sexual assault that has been put in place by the military is working, albeit a bit slowly. And I am looking into the heavily redacted report by the IG's office in, into Lichty's case. And it shows that he and a woman, now a colonel, had sharply different views, sharply differing views on their relationship. Lichty maintained he believed their encounters, who in 2007, one in 2009, were consensual. He felt coerced although she did not protest or struggle with him physically. Lishti said he was surprised because it took, quote-unquote, two to tango. Couldn't you have come up with something better? I mean, really, couldn't you have come up with something better? Now, this punishment is either the harshest or... Close to the harshest it can d dish out on the retired general because, unfortunately, the UCMJ, Uniform Code of Military Justice, Statute of Limitations, has expired. So they can't bring him back and court-martial him. Now, there is always the question of double standard. And, you know, how much rank you take in that, this, that, and the other. And it is very rare to see a court-martial for a general officer. It is very rare. So, and they cannot court-martial him, but they, here's how they, so how they take his rank. All right. I'm going to answer that real quick. They basically decided that the last rank he served properly and honorably at was two-star. So they rolled his pay back to that because the retirement pay is based on a three-year average. I know, I'm going into way more mill retirement than you ever wanted to hear. Well, sorry, you're going to have to just bear with for a sec. So what happened was they said that, well, the last year he served, served at, let me see if I can find the exact wording. I'm looking for it. Basically, the, the Air Force takes... Oh, where is it? I saw it. I thought I saw it in this article. Anyway, they rolled back his pay to the last year they felt he actually did his job properly. So he loses two stars, and his pay gets cut. What can I say? Behave, guys. Really? Behave. Moving right along, and I know I only got just a couple of minutes before I got the bottom of the hour break. Sec Defense Secretary Mattis, for those of you who aren't aware, is, has landed at Osan Air Base in South Korea. Oh yes, he landed there earlier today. And so far, he has met with the Republic of Korea acting, the Republic of Korea's acting president and prime minister, Hwang Ko An, and ROC National Security Advisor Kim Kwon Jin today in Seoul. Now, I'm just going to describe the scene. He landed. This this caught my attention. He is get to work. I'm not waiting around. And the plane came to a stop. 
They pushed up some narrow stairs. The guys that had opened the door for him to come out from the air, on the air stairs had barely cleared the way. They hadn't even gotten all the way up the stairs, and he's charging down the stairs. I thought that was a cute scene. So anyway, during the meetings, the secretary emphasized the priority that President Trump places on the Asia-Pacific and strengthening the, strengthening the U.S. Republic of Korea, a.k.a. South Korea, alliance. He also underscored the United States remained steadfast in its commitment to defend South Korea and that the U.S. extended deterrent commitment, extended deterrent commitment remains ironclad. Both South Korean officials impressed upon Secretary Mattis the importance of a close cooperation in the face of growing North Korean nuclear and ballistic missile threats. Secretary assured the alliance would continue to take defensive measures in response to this threat, the, 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 th threat, the threat developments, and that includes the stationing of the THAAD missile system, on the Korean Peninsula. Now, for those of you who have, we haven't touched on this in a little while. So, that terminal high altitude area, I think area defense. All right, so it's a system designed to shoot down incoming missiles. We'll just keep it that simple. Now, China's going, you can't install that thing. It's going to spy on us. Well, thankfully, our government's going, China, this thing is a defensive weapon. Get a grip. That's the long and short of it. And, of course, their China's little brother, North Korea, is not all that happy either. What can I say? What can I say? But, when we come back, I got some really awesome clips from UN Ambassador Nikki Haley. Got a couple other little clips I'm going to pop out at you too. But the ones Nikki Haley said, let me see if I can find her original one. Where she said she was going to kick tail and take names. She started. She started. Oh boy, she started. So we're going to take a listen to some of her audio when we come back and discuss the Ukraine situation. So we are going to go to that commercial break just a wee bit early because, going to be honest with you guys, I'm playing just a little bit longer commercial tonight because I need to get a little bit of water and a couple bites of food in me and I don't want to be choking and gagging on it when we come back. So we're going to take just a little longer commercial break than usual. Not much, I promise, just a little bit. Bear with me. All right, I knew you could. I knew you would. You guys are so faithful to me. You really are. Just going to be one minute longer than usual. All right, so I will see you on the other side. You are, you are listening, listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. A Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, 
nurturing your riding into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. for hanging in there with me over the just slightly extended commercial break. I just had to take that extra minute, guys, so I could get it together and stay with you. Because you know I don't like to miss you. In fact, I'm going to be here tomorrow, even though it's the same day I'm getting my cast. Yeah, I'm getting my permanent cast tomorrow. What can I say? It's going to be interesting. Hey, you know I'm you know me. I'm always up for a challenge. Moving right along. Let's talk Ukraine. Oh yes, Ukraine. First, I want to remind you, and it's only a little over a minute, so we're gonna indulge. Take a listen to what Nikki Haley said. Let me see if I can cue it up to about where I want. Oh, never mind. This was what she said when she first reported to the U.N. at a press conference. There is a new U.S. U.N. We talked to the staff yesterday, and you are going to see a change in the way we do business. It's no longer about working harder. It's about working smarter. And we have a fantastic team at the USUN that's ready to prove that. Our goal um, with the administration is to show value at the UN. And the way that we'll show value is to show our strength, show our voice, um, have the backs of our allies, 
and make sure that our allies have our back as well. For those that don't have our back, we're taking names. We will make points to respond to that accordingly. Um, but this is a time of strength. This is a time of action. This is a time of getting things done. And this administration is prepared and ready to go in, um, to have me go in, look at the UN, and everything that's working, we're going to make it better. Everything that's not working, we're going to try and fix. And anything that is, seems to be obsolete and not necessary, we're going to do away with. But this is a time of fresh eyes, um, new strength, new vision, and a great day at the USUN. Thank you very much. All right. So she basically said, we're taking names. And you don't want to be on that list. Now, I've got a couple of audio clips about her statements on Crimea. The dire situation in eastern Ukraine is one that demands clear and strong condemnation of Russian actions. The sudden increase in fighting in eastern Ukraine has trapped thousands of civilians and destroyed vital infrastructure. And the crisis is spreading, endangering many thousands more. This escalation of violence must stop. All right, so I think that was pretty much straightforward. So, she said, no, this isn't going to stand. Not one bit. Now, I've got another audio clip where she specifically discusses Crimea. The United States stands with the people of Ukraine who have suffered for nearly three years under <coughs> Russian occupation and military intervention. Until Russia and the separatists it supports respect Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, this crisis will continue. Eastern Ukraine, of course, is not the only part of the country suffering because of Russia's aggressive actions. The United States continue, continues to condemn and call for an immediate end to the Russian occupation of Crimea. Crimea is a part of Ukraine. Our Crimea-related <coughs> sanctions will remain in place until Russia returns control over the peninsula to Ukraine. All right. I don't think she minced any words there. I really don't. I mean, she came out swinging. Now, got a couple stories about what's going on in Ukraine. All right. Bewilderment the is, there's parts of this story I'm not going to read on air because they can be a little stomach churning. Russian, Russian born Galina Nivola. Nikolovania asked who is dying and for what? Because she was in the area of where some kind of attack, I'm guessing a mortar or rocket attack, or it said shelling, excuse me. Uh, it just says shelling. Had killed someone that she knew. And there's evidence of indiscriminate shelling by Russian-backed separatists in the city, charred craters scattered throughout. Witnesses also, there's intense activity by the Ukrainian army, an artillery gun driven through the same neighborhood, tanks parked by a block of flats with selfie-taking soldiers primed for battle. Yes, even soldiers take selfies. Separatists claim in Russian media reports that there have been civilian casualties on that side, too. The Ukraine says it's in war with Russia. Russia says it's never been involved in the war. However, comma, there's lots of evidence to the contrary. Lots and lots. And I don't have time to go into it all tonight. Maybe I'll have to put it all together and discuss it on a Saturday, but it won't be this Saturday. The new U.S. Pres president has mooted his desire to, quote, get along with Putin. He 
The U.S. State Department said it still supported Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Now, why is Russia interested in Crimea? I'm going to give you the real quick answer. They have a sub-base in Crimea, and they want it to be theirs. Period. End of discussion. And now they're trying to get a land bridge to that base. And the, the recent fighting has intensified. So, it's been pretty bad over there of late. On Thursday, Thursday last week, the fifth day of escalated fighting between government troops and Russia-backed separatist rebels, Two Ukrainian troops were killed and ten others wounded. The rebels said one of their fighters was killed. Shelling appeared to intensify after nightfall. Both sides, of course, reported civilian casualties. Two in Avdivka and one in Donetsk. Reporters hear rocket launchers being fired on both sides of the conflict during the night. In the afternoon, shelling was heard in the distance. At least 15 people have been reported killed since the fighting around Adivka surged over the weekend. Now we are discussing a lot of civilians caught in this crossfire. There are a lot. And some of the people in Ukraine lived through World War II. And... European monitors on Wednesday reported over 10,000 explosions in Donetsk region over 24 hours. That's the highest number ever recorded. There's been damages to houses, schools, and populated areas of Avdivka, which is a government-held town just north of Donetsk. And Donetsk is the largest rebel-controlled city, so I am just giving you both sides. Both are having issues. Both are struggling. Moving right along. Sorry, it takes a little longer to fish out my show prep. All right, I found this story just plain interesting. Kind of a good news story, but we're going to run with it anyway. Because after reading about that death and destruction, I need a little bit of a break. Recent, recent Department of Defense initiatives, such as more maternity leave, have sought to make milita- the military an even more family-friendly employer. So, what's interesting about this is, I'm looking for the def- The Colorado National Guard State Partnership Program provides opportunity through women's leadership exchanges between partner nations. Yes, I said nations. Colorado is reaching outside the 50 states. The SPP connects the state or territory's National Guard with the partner nation's military to grow an enduring mutually beneficial relationship. More than one-third of the world nations have a United States SPP partner. Jordan and Colorado have been SPP partners since 2004. Now, what has this done? Well, the Air National Guard has shown female soldiers doing stuff that the guys can do, like flying helicopters and planes, and that the women take pride in serving in their military. And there are women in the Jordanian military, which is who Colorado's partner with. The JAF, the Jordanian Air Force delegation, flew to Colorado And they went to the 
Army National Guard High Altitude Aviation Training Site in Gypsum. The flight marks the first time that any of the Jordanian Air Force soldiers and airmen had flown in a UH-60 Blackhawk. One of the women said that she'd undergone private pilot training. Later, during an exchange, participants held a roundtable to discuss what it's like for women who serve both the Colorado National Guard soldiers and airmen and their Jordanian counterparts found much common ground. So, like I said, I found, I found that article interesting. The percentage of women in the Jordanian Air Force is nearing 5%. Yes, I said 5 they have all, fe- all female units. A, R- a Royal Jordanian Air Force member just became the first female pilot candidate. So, this could be interesting. This really could. I just thought it was such a good news story. I had to share it. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a follow-up. Remember uh, last night, if you were listening, I brought you a thing that The only private university in North Korea, the Pyongyang University of Science and Technology, reached out to Texas A&M. Well, they've done a little bit more. And I'm not sure how they got away away with this, but they did it. There's a delegation from the PUST here in United States. Yes, a delegation from the school is currently here in the United States. Leaders of the university visited Texas A&M University the other day seeking help in teaching agricultural subjects. PUST plans to visit roughly 10 American universities but refuses to disclose to the media which ones besides Texas A&M. So, although there's suspicion, Cornell may be next on the list. Now, don't forget, we have heavy sanctions among with North Korea. Legal issues abound as well. One North Korean sanction expert tells me that PUST is subject to immediate designation for sanction violations for any one of several reasons. If it's, if anything is sold, supplied, transferred, or purchased directly or indirectly to or from North Korea, including anyone acting on behalf of the government North of North Korea or the Workers' Party. Now, what specific things are banned? Metal, graphite, coal, software. Where any revenue or goods received may benefit the government of North Korea or the Workers' Party. They also can't materially assist, sponsor, or provide financial material or technological support for goods or service in support of any person whose property and interests are in property are blocked. Okay, so who knows? Now, PUST... Uh, Defectors have accused PUST of training North Korean hackers. PUST denies it. PUST currently has license from the Commerce Department that predate the the executive order that has this. Now, the executive order does override prior licenses and permits. So, who knows how this is going to shake out, but I find it rather interesting. I'd actually like love to talk to that delegation. But if their schedule's not public, my chances of catching up with them pretty slim. Moving right along. And yes, it's another North Korea story. North Korea warns South Korea of catastrophic consequence of U.S. drills. Oh yes, they're back up in arms about the joint 
South Korean U.S. drills. And we're talking about key resolve and full eagle joint military exercises planned for the month of March to bring in, and they bring in U.S. nuclear strategic assets. So, now of course North Korea always claims we are rehearsing an invasion. South Korea is wary of, of missiles and North Korea submarine threats and for the first time deployed Augusta Wetlands Wildcat Maritime Helicopters to be used for anti-submarine warfare. The first four helicopters were deployed Wednesday and the remaining four are to be placed in position in July. Wildcat helicopters can be used to detect enemy ships and submarines. Anti-submarine torpedoes can be mounted on the helicopter. So this could be interesting, folks. And don't forget, Kim Jong-un says they're going to test an ICBM, or an Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. When? Who knows? U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis sees his visit to South Korea as a listening trip aimed at having a chance to learn what allies think. So, he's basically, it's basically a get-to-know-you meeting, let's talk. What can I say? And after South Korea, his is going on to Japan. So... What do I have on Mosul and Dash? Well, believe it or not, I don't see an Iran story here. I really don't. Now, we are coming up on the bottom of the, on the top of the hour, and I am watching that clock, because I want to make sure I get taps in tonight. Remember, I told you at the top of the show, I'm playing taps for the police officer that was killed in the Delaware prison riot, or prison siege, however you want to call it. So we're going to cover a couple other things. A Syrian opposition figure who who says he controls 3,000 Arab fighters has told Reuters they are training with the U.S.-led coalition forces. They are preparing for the Battle of Raqqa. And the Syrian de Democratic Force launched an operation in Raqqa province in November, ultimately aimed at seizing the city. The first two phases have captured territory to the north and west of Raqqa. The third will seem to seek to take remaining areas. One decision Donald Tr President Donald Trump does have to make is whether to directly provide weapons to Kurdish fighters as they push towards Raqqa. Now, let me see if I have that audio clip from yesterday. If not, I will... Let me see if I can find it real quick. Bear with me for just a second. I think it's here. In Syria, the Syrian Democratic Forces with their affiliated Syrian Arab Coalition fighters continue to clear, back clear and strengthen defensive positions four to five kilometers west of Tabqa Dam. As local Arab tribes join the ranks, the coalition will continue to bolster these fighters' abilities with training, weapons, and equipment, as we have already done for more than 3,000 members of the SAC. Most recently, the coalition provided several Guardian armored vehicles to provide the Syrian Arab coalition with increased survivability from ISIL small arms and improvised explosive device threats. Coalition efforts to isolate and pressure Raqqa continue. As we've discussed before, Raqqa represents the nexus of Okay, no need to play the rest. We gave the Syrian Arab Coalition a few, no specific number, 
Big, strong, tough, bomb-proof vehicles. Probably an MRAP or something, or a Bearcat or something like that. Now, I don't have the answer queued up. I'm going to give myself one shot to find it. Okay, the SDF is a multi-ethnic group. Uh, they've been proven to be a, a, a reliable partner for us. They've defeated Dash in many... No, that doesn't seem to be the question I'm looking for. I'm going to take one more shot at this. It, um, the Syrian Arab Coalition was uh, the... Uh, next, we'll go to uh, Lori Milroy from Kurdistan. Basically, there was a reporter that asked, could the Kurds get use of those vehicles? You know, one of the things about liberating a very large area like Mosul is that you're going to find a treasure trove of intelligence information. That is a true fact, but I just didn't need to let that clip play along. All right, we're just going to move right along. I will have to get that audio clip queued up for you for another time. Now, I've got one last story. And then we are going to talk about the Delaware prison siege. When Dash sees the five-star Nineveh Umbrero Hotel in East Mosul, it replaced wealthy Iraqi patrons with another kind of elite, foreign fighters and suicide bombers, seen as the group's most prized members. The Iraqi army's recent capture of the ruined compound renamed Hotel Warathin inheritors by Dash deprived the militants of a strategic site that offers a comprehensive view across the vast city. Yet the 11-story building fringed with palm trees is a reminder that many dangers and uncertain of the many dangers and certainties ahead as the Iraqi security forces prepare to expand their offensive against Dash. All right, now, what did they do? Alcohol was banned, but painkillers and syringes used by Dash fighters before and after battle were okay. And there were RPG and glass cutters at the entrance to the health club. One soldier asked not to be named, studied shredded furniture and chairs piled up on top of each other on lower f floors, seeking cues, clues on how Dash operated the hotel. Dash leadership must have held meetings in the conferences on the lower floors to discuss strategy. Dash had its own price list for the hotel, restaurant, and coffee shop. Beds were missing from hotel rooms. Dash said militants sold them in the market as, self, as the self-proclaimed caliphate began to collapse. And Dash leaders for their part did their best to keep up morale, but judging by a copy of their local propaganda newspaper left behind at the hotel. Front page headlines claim operation killed hundreds of Iraqi troops. Another highlighted the attack on Istanbul nightclub on New Year's Eve. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the hotel will be revived anytime soon, with fierce fighting expected in West Mosul. And even if Dash is defeated in Mosul, the group is expected to become an insurgency. So, what can I say? Now, it's... Despicable what they did to this building, but it's even more despicable what Dash has done to the historic ru uh, ruins. Now, I'm going to briefly, and I know I, it's top of the hour, but Rick, you're just going to have to bear with me for a minute because this is important. 
Just after 5 a.m. Thursday, after more than 18 hours of tense negotiation, a prison response team broke down the doors to the Vaughan Correctional Center's C building. Prisoners still held two staffers and other inmates hostage. They found a female counselor shielded by inmates, uninjured, and protected throughout the hostage situation. Moments later, they found 47-year-old Sergeant Stephen Floyd unresponsive. He was later pronounced, pronounced dead. The counselor was one of several hostages who talked with News Journal on a phone call Wednesday afternoon during the siege. So, I'm not going to go into... So they could relay their demands. All 120 inmates housed inside Building C are considered suspects in the hostage situation until investigations prove otherwise. What led to the overtaking of the correction officers and subsequent standoff remained unsaid. Thursday, though the inmates and Department of Correction employees said the takeover was a long time in the making, state officials wouldn't speculate. According to the inmates... Part of it was because Trump became president, and part of it was because they wanted more benefits and privileges and education and perks in prison. I'm sorry. You're in prison. Yes, I know you're there to be rehabilitated, or you're waiting on trial, because in some cases they do use this prison for pretrial detention. But you should have thought about that before you got involved in crime. Sergeant Stephen Floyd, thank you for your service to the state of Delaware.